this is Adam from EnglishAcon.com and in this video I'm going to discuss delta time found in Construct 2. Now I'm just going to open up Construct 2 and create a new empty project just to begin with. Um, most games uh, will have a loop running through them which is the engine or a cycle um, which will determine the speed at which they process the conditions and events now you can have a game which is dependent on how quickly your screen refreshes or the frame rate and these could be referred to as frame rate dependent games but because different people have different computers and their games run at different frame rates that's different fps it's better and more sensible to have a game which is frame rate independent normally you'll find that the rate at which the game refreshes the frame rate or the cycle is dependent on the um, engine speed so for example in Construct 2 if you would have a series of events one cycle of events pass, um, of it, one cycle going through each event from top to bottom which will be referred to as one tick would be the same as one frame rate so for example here it says events are run from top to bottom once per tick i.e. at the frame rate and normally in Construct 2 the default frame rate is 60 frames per second which means that in one second there are 60 ticks which means that in one second if your game isn't overcomplicated, then your code runs 60 times but as mentioned there are occurrences and occasions where people don't have the same hardware and so their games run slower now if you had a frame rate frame rate dependent game where things would move around depending on how many frames are refreshed um, if you had less frames being refreshed these things would move at a slower speed and if there were more frames because the things move depending on how many frames there are these things would move faster in games such as multiplayer this could give one somebody with a better computer an advantage over somebody else so generally you want a frame rate independent and Construct 2 enables you to do this using something called Delta Time and to just demonstrate what this is I'm going to create a simple project of two moving blocks right, from left to right to show you how not how using a frame rate dependent and independent um, programming scheme can actually change the outcome so if I just create two sprites you can change whatever colour I'm going to just change the size to 32 by 32 here and I'm going to position this to the side and then going to right click go to clone object and duplicate it and then going to double click and give it a different colour so this one's pink that one's green I'm then going to go to the event sheet I'm going to right click add event go to system scroll down to where it's uh, no sorry scroll up to where it says every tick now every tick I'm going to add an action I'm going to set this sprite, this green sprite's x value, set its x value to its self dot x. Alternatively, I can highlight that, delete it, and come over here to the green sprite we're talking about. S double click on it, scroll down to where it says its x value, and I'm going to set it to its x value, which is the same as saying self dot x. To its x value plus one. So th every tick, we reset the sprite's x value to its current x value but pr plus one so if we were to play this you should see it moving across the screen as the x value increases towards the right and as you can see so currently because there's not much going on um, this should be running at 60 frames per second which means that my code every second is running 60 times and since I'm only moving these across by one it should move 60 pixels every second but what happens when that frame rate drops? I'm just going to include a particle effect and I'm going to create an environment uh, whereby the frame rate, frame rate will drop. Um, I can do that quite simply by constantly creating particle effects so that it overloads the engine. So there's my particle effect and instead of keeping it in um, this condition and action just so it's easy to see what's going on for you normally I'd put them in the same condition which is every tick because uh, there's no point 
not doing that. I'm just going to create the object particles on the layer 0 from a random position of 0, comma, to, if I just mouse, mouse over to the system, to the viewport on the right of layer 0. What I've done now, I've used the random mathematical um, calculator to choose a random value for x between 0 and the x value found on the right side of the viewport. I'm just going to copy this and paste it into the y slot and instead of having viewport right, I'm going to have viewport bottom because the greater the y value, um, the lower it down it is. So the viewport bottom would be the largest one. And I'm only concerned with having this particle effect shown on screen because I'm deliberately using particles to slow down um, the game. So I'm just clicking on the particles, making sure that they are continuous spray. Coming over to the here to layers, I'm clicking on layer one. I'm selecting these two and I'm moving these to layer one so that they're not covered by the particles. So that when I play this now, you should see this move and you'll notice that as the frame rate drops, this um, sprite actually starts to slow down. That is because it's a frame rate dependent sprite or its programming is associated with that. Um, it's moving at the speed of how quickly the game refreshes and how quickly it goes down. But you can see why this isn't the best way to program a game, especially in multiplayer. So the alternative way is to use delta time. So coming back to layer 1, this, I'm going to use sprite 2 and I'm going to move this with a frame rate independent movement. Go back to your event sheet 1, go to here, I'm simply going to click on that, press Control c to copy and then Control v to print it. I'm then going to right click on sprite, go down to replace object and I'm going to replace it with a sprite 2. And you'll see here it's automatically replaced sprite 2 in the condition and it sprites to x value. Now, double clicking back on this, instead of having one, I'm going to put two parentheses or brackets and making sure the cursor is within those, I'm going to type dt, which means delta time, I'm then going to use the star symbol you found on your numbers, which means multiplied by and 60. Now, dt multiplied by 60 is roughly the equivalent of one. So if this is dt times 60 pixels, then every um, 60th of a second, it would be the same as one pixel. So if you just realize, if you just remember that dt times 60 equals one, so if you'd like to move this by one, um, each pixel at a frame rate of 60, the equivalent is dt times 60. So now, if let's click on preview, and you should see that even though the computer slows down, it's calculating this as relative position correctly, even though you're noticing the frame rate dropping, it's still maintaining its correct position along. Now with a, a dropped frame rate, it's obviously not going to be smooth, but it is in the correct position, whereas this one is actually slowing down. And if I were to go to events and right click and dis disable this, you'll see that at 60 FPS, then both of those should be moving at roughly the same speed. So that's delta time, and it's used to compensate for different frame rates, uh, so that your game is not so your game is not dependent on the frame rate for its speed, but it's it's dependent on the in, <laughs> the internal clock, but calculating the um, the difference if the frame rate drops. So, so just to recap, delta time is the time in seconds since the last tick. There's one tick per frame, and therefore the FPS is the tick rate. If delta time measures the time since the last tick, i.e. the FPS, um, sorry, delta time measures the time since the last week, the FPS, sorry, I've got a note here which I'm reading to make sure I cover everything. If the FPS decreases, delta time increases, which is how it compensates. It's recommended that you use delta time wherever you can, so wherever you're moving something, you're using delta time, and the reason that is also not just to make it a frame rate independent but you can use it with what's known as time scaling which is what I'm going to show you just now but before that I just would just like to point out something else if I right click and clone this and I'm going to color this into something else let's uh, we've got green let's make yellow no like a whitish yellow slightly transparent and I'm going to give this a behavior of where is it bullet Okay, 
so it's got a pull up behavior it's got a speed maybe I'll put it's got 400 it should be faster than these other two but um, I'm going to right click actually no I'm going to just play this first just to show that it's, pull, it's moving across I'm going to drop down the speed to 60 and play let's see so it's roughly the same speed as the speed of that so the speed actually tells you how many pixels um, it moves in relation to a second um, first event sheet if I right click and untoggle this so that we've got the particle effect slowing down the program you'll notice that both of these actually move at the same speed I haven't put this on the right level looks that's because the plugins and behaviors will have delta time incorporated within them so that's something to consider that a lot of the behaviors already have delta time considered in them however if you're creating your own behavior speed it's worth actually putting delta time in every, every way you can now another benefit of using delta time is that it is affected by what's known as time scaling as a default the time scale for your game game runs at one so if I just include the mouse object or plugin so that when I on click on left click I actually set the time scale to 0 0.4 you'll see that the time scale I'm just going to right click to disable this uh, come on not make or block sorry the time scale affects anything moving with delta time because the time scale affects delta time so I press play so everything's moving I'm now going to left click and then you'll notice that these have changed their time scale to 0 0.4 so the time scale is actually a multiple which multiplies with delta time to reduce its value and the reason I'm introducing this is because if you've correctly used delta time in all of your programming then it's very easy to make a pause um, effect so I'm just going to ch change some of these so if you just see what I've done on the left click button I'm setting this time scale to zero on the right click it's set to one so when I play this if I left click it's set to zero so they don't move at all including the particle effect you'll notice because that has a delta well it has a time scale associated with it then right click I continue so I can pause it like that but you notice that this little fellow has just run off that's because sometimes um, depending on how you've programmed if you're not using delta time um, parts of your program will continue because they're not as affected by the time scale however you can get around that and what I'm just going to do now I'm just going to untoggle this I'm going to move this down here but I am going to toggle this so that every tick we have this um, we've got the sprite 2 moving related to delta time I'm then going to add a group I'm just going to leave it as group and I'm going to drag this into the group and so when the group sorry when the left button is clicked I'm going to deactivate the group by clicking add action go into system typing group to search for it sets group active group deactive so on left click the system is going to set the group called group which is this one here deactivated and I'm holding down control as I move this down to copy it and I'm double clicking and then I'm going to set this to activate when I right click so this will actually deactivate this group and then reactivate it depending on what I click this means that I can pause the game any part of the game by both deactivating the groups which are running script or by if something's associated with delta time by changing the time scale as you can see here and it's fairly easy to create a pause um, effect so that's another good reason to use delta time you can also use time scaling zero to check that you have correctly used delta time in your programming because everything with delta time in will um, pause or it'll stop because delta time will become zero when the time scale is zero okay so thank you very much for watching my video I hope this video has been informative and has helped you um, with delta time remember to use it everywhere but remember that some behaviors already include delta time 
to check it by changing the time scale to see if those objects change their movement speed or their reaction speed or whatever, however you've programmed your game. And if you need to create a pause using both time scale, you can also use group deactivation to help stop other parts of your code from running. Thank you very much.